The fact that you can make a sausage party smell fishy is a weird sciencey fact that boggles my mind. I live in the land of 10,000 lakes and a big river Johnny Cash flooded with his tears after getting his heart broke by a woman he met in St. Paul, Minnesota. And while Minnesota's waters are truly a national resource and recreation treasure, you sadly cannot live in a modern world and have an abundance of lakes, rivers, and streams without having an abundance of invasive species. From zebra mussels to Eurasian milfoil to Chinese mystery snails, Minnesota has no shortage of invasive species. Yes, Chinese mystery snails are a real thing and they sound fun. Why they're called that, I don't know. That's not what the video was about, so I didn't look it up. They're also not fun, they're invasive, but they sound fun. One of the biggest, both literally and figuratively, invasive species problems we have right now is the common carp. The fish, which can grow up to two feet in length and weigh up to 10 pounds, has been swimming upstream against Johnny Cash's tears for years now. And the damn things are not only just hazardous to the health of our environment and ecosystem, they are just straight up hazardous. They swim in these big schools and they can jump like really high high out of the water. Like really high. That's a good hang. You couldn't catch this. And as you can imagine, if you're cruising along in a boat at 20 or 30 miles an hour and suddenly get smacked in the face with a two foot long, 10 pound fish, it can knock you the fuck out. Hazardous. So now obviously putting these pests in their place is a priority. On the bright side, unlike most invasive species, this particular invasive species is delicious. This is one of those times where gluttony could actually be a good thing. Seriously, come up here and have some Asian fish tacos. We want you to eat us out of our, of our invasive fish problem. Even if you're a vegan or vegetarian, don't let that get in your way. Just come up here and pretend it's a vegetable that actually tastes good. I'm just kidding. I do love my veggies, but I'm not kidding about you helping us with our fish problem. Like, please come, come eat them. Like, come up here and go fishing. I'll even take you. I, I'm not a great fisherman, but I do have a boat and a drinking problem. And that's two of the three things you need to be a good fisherman. I gotta admit, I am a little disappointed in our state that we haven't solved this problem the most Minnesota way possible already. How have we not just organized a fishing tournament followed by a fish fry for charity or some shit? We love fishing and our fishing tournaments. We've got ice fishing tournaments, open water tournaments, bass tournaments, walleye tournaments, multi species tournaments. Hell, we have an entire festival dedicated to catching eel pout every year. You know what an eel pout is? This is a fucking eel pout. You want to know how many people go compete in the eel pout festival fishing tournament? This many fucking people show up to catch that ugly ass fish. All I'm saying is I feel like we haven't explored our most practical solution yet. You tell a bunch of Minnesotans we're doing a no bag limit carp fishing tournament followed by a $5 fish fry that we're going to donate the proceeds to St. Jude's and the winner gets a big trophy and their picture and name on the front page of the Star Tribune. And you wouldn't even be able to see the water on the Mississippi because it would have a blanket of dudes that looked like Max Goldman. And at the end of the day, I don't think you'd be able to find an Asian carp. Sorry, what were we talking about again? All right, this was supposed to be a science video. Anyway, since the grumpy old men approach to carp control isn't good enough for some people, they're looking for more sciencey ways to control the carp. Right now, the University of Minnesota is exploring the sciencey method of genetic modification. One of the things they did was genetically modify them to glow in the dark. I'm, I'm not sure how that helps, but I thought it was cool. But their main focus is on daughterless carp and sterile male carp, which is where they're either genetically modifying male carp to be sterile, so when they reproduce with female carp in the wild, they don't have any babies, or modifying carp to only produce male offspring, which ideally would end with a carp population that is entirely male and then no carp population, which is where my opening joke about the sausage party smelling fishy came from, in case you forgot or, or didn't get it. Anyway, this type of genetic modification for pest control is not just being used for carp, it's also being used for mosquitoes and, and other invasive species. But the work that the University of Minnesota is doing right now on genetic modification to control carp is really relevant right now for a really specific reason. Especially if you're Minnesotan. Holy shit, he needs a bath. That's because the Environmental and Natural Resources Trust Fund is on the chopping block right now in the state of Minnesota. If you're not familiar with the ERNTF, it's a Minnesota constitutional amendment that was established in 1988. Using, in part, state lottery money, it has provided over a billion dollars to over 1,600 projects since 1991. It's helped plant trees, expand recreational trails, clean up drinking water, update septic systems, research wolves in Voyager National Park. The expanse and impact this program has had cannot be overstated. And this program is also helping, you guessed it, get rid of Asian carp, all by funding research like the genetic modification I was talking about and studies and DNR initiatives. And who knows, maybe even a big fishing tournament. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Now, if you enjoy anything outdoorsy in Minnesota, whether that's hunting or hiking or fishing, if you support organizations like Pheasants Forever or Ducks Unlimited, if you like drinking clean water, then this trust fund positively affects your life. Not only does it help the environment, it helps the economy, it creates jobs, it brings in tourists, the work that it does cannot be overstated. But it could be going away very soon because if you're a Minnesota resident, the Environmental and Natural Resources Trust Fund is on your November ballot as a ballot measure. And if you don't 
don't vote yes on it, we are all going to lose it. Let me be clear, if you do not vote yes on reauthorizing the fund, it will go away. If you leave it blank and don't vote at all, it is the same as a no vote. And there's no reason to not vote yes on it because it does amazing things at no expense to you because the majority of its funding just comes from the Minnesota State Lottery, not from our tax dollars. So if you're a Minnesota resident, however you're voting and whoever you're voting for, make sure you vote yes on this ballot measure. Because the fact that what you spend on Scratchers serves a straightforward sponsorship for services that support our ecosystem and species, well, that is pretty mind-boggling and something we don't want to lose.